Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is a pretty interesting and unique collaboration between Intel and AMD squeezed inside a 1.2 litre chassis. This is the Intel NUC 8i7HVK, otherwise known as Hades Canyon. It features an Intel Core i7 alongside dedicated AMD Radeon Vega M graphics with HBM2 or high bandwidth memory. You know like what the Vega 56 and 64 desktop graphics cards used. Prior to this thing's launch in 2018, these mini machines used Intel's own graphics. I think the previously released Skull Canyon system used Iris Pro 580. The inclusion of a built-in Radeon GPU wasn't repeated either, it was something exclusive to a handful of Kaby Lake G-series processors. There were a couple of variations of graphics though, Radeon Vega MGL or Vega MGH, the latter being more powerful and the one being featured inside this along with a 100 watt quad core 8 thread i7-8809G, hence the power slab. Yeah, the power source isn't built inside the machine too, that would be crazy. At launch, the bare bones configuration would have cost $999. This is before factoring in RAM, storage, and an operating system. Like the mini PCs we see today, they are definitely interesting, but they don't make sense for those looking to get the most performance out of a specific budget, and those who care about customization. That being said, it does have a pretty cool light up skull, and not many PC cases have that, so. Yeah, also in 2025, I paid a couple of hundred pounds instead of the 1,000 it would have cost me in 2018. It's still too much though, if I'm being honest, but I've wanted to test one of these for ages. Uh, the reason I say it's too much is because the latest drivers date back to 2023, and to find them, you need to go to the ASUS website because ASUS took over the NUC product lines um, the same year, I think, 2023, and there you'll find some drivers, but I'm not sure if these are just for the Intel HD graphics, which this thing also has, or the Vega graphics as well. Yeah, the uh, the Vega graphics aren't actually supported anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Now, because I wasn't sure about the whole driver thing, I googled it and found a forum post from a fella named Big John who had posted a direct download link to the Radeon software. This was a legit ASUS link too, so big up Big John, you legend. The drivers date back to June 2023 of course, but it didn't even find a later version from within the Radeon software, so yeah, I guess this is it. I've heard that these Radeon RX Vega MGH graphics compare to a GTX 1050 Ti, which doesn't sound like a big deal seven years on, but at the time that card was only a couple of years old, so I think when you look back at it, it does seem quite impressive, especially considering the size of this thing. It would also be interesting to see how it would compare to uh, integrated graphics of today, like the 680M or 780M, so we'll have to try that out at some point too. Before we test some games, I should mention that this NUC came with 32 gigs of dual channel DDR4, 2400 MHz to be precise. We can use faster stuff apparently, but I don't have any spare DDR4 on hand. The Vega GPU has its own 4 gigs of integrated HBM2 memory though, so it's not like some of the modern mini PCs we've tested with integrated solutions where the system memory is shared and faster RAM will make the frame rates higher. Some games will however still benefit from faster system RAM, so I'll see if I can actually find some faster sticks for this thing. But let's see what the Intel NUC 8i7HVK can do in 2025. I did get a few outdated driver warnings today, of course, but all the games actually started and played, apart from any that required ray tracing because this thing does not support it, as expected. So we'll start with GTA 5 Enhanced at 1080p with a minimum preset and TAA now. I should have tested the legacy or original version of the game to be honest, but I had this installed already and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to delete this install 100 gig game and then delete that and reinstall this. <laughs> I don't have that much hard drive space left, so I thought I'll just stick with this. And I thought it was going to run worse to be honest, but I was quite surprised. 88 FPS even with the minimum preset, which in the enhanced version doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, we're using TAA as well for an average of 88, a 1% low of 70 and a 0.1% low of 63. So even with the 4 gig uh, Vega RXM inside this thing, it's a pretty consistent experience and it looks good too. Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with the lowest settings for 108 frames per second, a 1% low of 97 and a 0.1% low of 52. There were a few dips and drops here and there, 
but all I can say is that it wasn't as smooth as I would have liked to have seen. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 up next at 1080p with a low preset and FSR 3.1 set to balance. Now if we turn any form of upscaling off and just run it at native resolution, we do scrape just past 30 frames per second, but there will be some dips and drops below this of course, so I think enabling FSR is your best bet. Unfortunately, due to the 4 gigs of VRAM as part of the Vega M graphics here, this will cause a few stutters in and around town. Like here, for example, we're seeing 46 as an average, but the 1% low is 16 and the 0.1% low is 6. And you can probably see some of the spikes in the frame time graph on screen as well, which means it wasn't a very consistent experience, but it was playable a lot of the time. Helldivers 2 with the lowest settings in the ultra quality render scale here. This actually improved our frame rate by about 10 FPS, but you can certainly notice it's on. It's not of the same quality as like FSR 3 or anything like that, so it definitely makes things a bit blurrier, but it meant that instead of 40 or so FPS, we saw 51 as an average. The 1% low was 33, and the 0.1% low was 30, so pretty smooth in terms of the percentile lows, even when loads of the weird alien things filled the screen as well, so yeah, not bad overall, I think, considering the hardware. I tried Red Dead Redemption 1 next, sort of working our way up to Red Dead 2. I thought, hmm, not quite sure how Red Dead 2 is going to perform, so we'll start with the original game, which of course on PC came out after Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, 1080p with a high preset and FXAA for 83 frames per second, so pretty impressive to be honest. At a 1% of 60 and a 0.1% of 39, we could even enable FSR 3 if we wanted to for a better native AA a visual experience but that did mean a pretty hefty drop in the performance numbers. Still 60 FPS, but I think FXAA is probably your best bet for this hardware. Cyberpunk 2077 at the lowest settings with FSR 3 balance next. I wasn't expecting much. It was okay, but where this was let down was with the dips and drops, especially when driving into busier areas. The performance fell apart a little bit, but again, can't complain considering the age of the hardware and the fact that we're using an outdated driver or the latest driver the latest driver is an outdated driver i don't think things would change too much if this hardware was still supported really especially considering the vram limitation and 40 fps was okay next up then we have red dead redemption 2 i actually chose the high textures here and set everything else to lowest i couldn't choose the ultra textures because the game wouldn't let me do that it said we didn't have enough vram uh, we could do this manually from within the INI file, but I thought we'd just leave things as they are here. And this actually gave us 45 frames per second. The geometry level of detail and grass level of detail sliders were also turned right up to max, and TAA was set to medium, better than I expected. I was thinking low 30s, but yeah, 45 with a 1% low of 34 and a 0.1% low of 30. As we made our way into town, things dropped a little bit, but it was still more than playable, in my opinion anyway. Fortnite to finalise then, 1080p with a low preset and TAA for 92 FPS. This wasn't even with the um, low graphics settings API. You know, you can turn it into a, like a PS2 looking game with the, the performance API or whatever it's called. But I just used the X12 here for 92 FPS. 1% low of 66 and a 0.1% low of 22. So definitely playable with a few expected dips and drops as I normally get in Fortnite anyway. Overall then, the crossover episode between Intel and AMD, the NUC 8i7 HVK here with Radeon M dedicated graphics. It's a pretty unique machine, this thing, and it's nice to see that it is still somewhat capable if you manage your expectations as far as settings go. Shame about modern driver support not existing, but not the end of the world as can be seen from the performance today. Certainly for older or weaker games, it's still going to put up a decent fight. And it's nice that we can upgrade the RAM and uh, slot a couple of M.2 SSDs in here. There's also loads of connectivity on this thing, like loads of different ports, which is nice, especially on a machine of this age. And getting one these days, it's a pretty fun experience, but probably not worth your money if you're looking to get the most out of your budget. But there we are. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down below and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.